German citizens are only those of German or related blood willing to serve the German Reich and people. Marriages between Jews and citizens of German or related blood are prohibited. SS Brigadier General Stroop, in charge of the Warsaw Ghetto in 1943, had learned his Nazi lessons well. In a secret report, he said, The Reichsführer SS ordered on the 23rd of April 1943 the cleaning out of the ghetto with utter ruthlessness. I therefore decided to destroy and burn down the entire ghetto. Jews frequently left their hideouts, but occasionally remained in the burning buildings and jumped out of the windows only when the heat became unbearable. Life in the sewers was not pleasant after the first week. Tear gas bombs were thrown into the manholes and the Jews were driven out and captured. Countless numbers of Jews were liquidated in sewers and bunkers through blasting. The longer the resistance continued, the tougher became the members of the Waffen-SS, police and Wehrmacht, who always discharged their duties in an exemplary manner. Little by little, the Nazis were reaching what they called the final solution, the total extermination of the Jews of Europe. Hess described the process well. We had two SS doctors on duty at Auschwitz to examine the incoming transports of prisoners. The prisoners would be marched past one of the doctors who would make spot decisions as they walked by. Those who were fit for work were sent into the camp, others were sent immediately to the extermination plant. Children of tender years were invariably exterminated since by reasons of their youth they were unable to work. We endeavored to fool them into thinking they were to go through a delousing process. It took from three to 15 minutes to kill the people in the death chamber, depending upon climatic conditions. We knew when the people were dead because their screaming stopped. We usually waited about one half hour before we opened the doors and removed the bodies. After the bodies were removed, our special commandos took off the rings and extracted the gold from the teeth of the corpses. Much of this loot was then transferred to secret vaults of the Reichsbank at Frankfurt am Main, the Reichsbank of Defendant Funk. Labor Chief Robert Lai knew that six million Jews died in the Nazis' final solution. In his will, he said, In anti-Semitism, we violated a basic commandment of God's creation. It is hard to admit mistakes, but the whole existence of our people is in question. We must have the courage to rid ourselves of anti-Semitism. God has taught me that in my cell in Nuremberg. And Defendant Frank himself said before this court, haben den Kampf gegen das Judentum jahrelang geführt. We have fought wir against Jewry and we have allowed ourselves to make utterances which are terrible. A thousand years will pass and this guilt of Germany will still not be erased. The prosecution rests. The defense begins. They call 61 witnesses and introduce 38,000 affidavits on the defendant's behalf. They submit 136,000 more affidavits on behalf of the SS, 10,000 on behalf of the SA, 7,000 on behalf of the SD, 3,000 on behalf of the General Staff and OKW, 2,000 on behalf of the Gestapo. 
These attorneys were personally selected by the defendants. Many are well-known German lawyers, and each now rises to plead acquittal for his client. Some make blanket denials of all guilt. Some of the defendants had, without doubt, a great influence in those spheres which did not interest Hitler. They had no part whatsoever in the great decisions concerning war and peace, armistice and peace offers, etc. Other attorneys lead their clients through a carefully prepared defense. Here, Streicher is examined. And I'll continue. It has also been stated by the prosecution that Himmler and Kaltenbrunner would have had no one to carry out their orders to kill if you hadn't made that propaganda and if you hadn't conducted the education of the German people in that sense. I don't believe that those who had been given the order by the Führer to carry out the killings or to pass an order to kill, that those people would have been made to do this by my periodical. Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, existed, and the contents of that book were the authority, the cause. Next comes Kaltenbrunner. You are accused of establishing Mauthausen, of inspecting and visiting this camp regularly. The witness, Herr Regal, testified having seen you in this camp, and further testified having seen you at the inspection of gas chambers and while these gas chambers were in operation. The testimony is wrong. Every concentration camp in the Reich, of which I know anything, was established by Himmler through Paul. Later, the prosecution is allowed to cross-examine the defendants. Rosenberg is questioned. Did your ministry force people to leave their homes, to go to Germany, to work for the German state? It is true that force was used, and it is not denied that some terrible encroachments occurred. Now, Rader takes the stand. On the 23rd of May, in the Reich's Chancellery, Hitler said that he would give you an indoctrination on the political situation, and he said, we are left with a decision to attack Poland at the first opportunity. Did you still think that he had no aggressive intentions? I believed that for a long time. Just as General Jodl said, after Hitler had solved the Czech problem purely politically, it was to be hoped he would also be able to solve the Polish question without bloodshed. I believe that until the last moment, until the 22nd of August. Keitel is cross-examined. Yesterday, your counsel showed you this order, dated 16 September 1941. It said that it is necessary to take immediate cruel measures and that human life in the East is absolutely worthless. You remember the basic idea of the order, that human life costs absolutely nothing? Please answer the question. You signed this order with this statement? Yeah. Next, Yodel. 